Marceline's Closet. If you're unfamiliar with the plot of this episode, Finn and Jake are going over Marceline's house to blah, 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 jam out with her. However, they don't find her there and notice a note on her door that says, hey, I'll be RB, don't go in my house while I'm gone. So old. <laughs> So obviously they go in her house. Now the <laughs> the DVD. The <laughs> I'm fucking goofy as shit. Hang on. I just woke up. Anyways, the DVD commentary has some interesting stuff to say about this episode. Starting us off, Jesse Moynihan goes into the inspiration behind the balloon music. My friend Mike, he and I used to see shows together in Philadelphia. He believed balloons would replace guitars as the most popular music instrument, and he really believed in it. And we would go see avant-garde balloon performances in Philadelphia, and that's what this is all about. Sort of my shout out to my friend Mike and his belief in the balloon. They also confirm that he is still active with balloons to this day, at least at the time this DVD commentary was recorded. Not, not my recording of what's on the DVD commentary, but the literal nigga. Fuck. Jesse Moynihan then continues with, I had a band, and when my band couldn't play this show, he put a band together as a cover band of my band, but with just balloons. Lastly, I think Rebecca Sugar had actually asked him, like, how much range can you even really get out that bitch? And it was stated, you can get a lot. You have a squirt bottle and you rub it, different frictions, and can use different materials to rub it, mostly rubbing. There was also this eyelid scene that Akko Castuera put in and Pendleton Ward thought it was actually too gross. Which is crazy because he normally is the one that loves, loves gross shit. But he said this one in specific was a little too gross and he felt bad because he was like, eh, tone it down. But it was just too gross for him. Also, I am hungry as shit. I thought I could wait, but I will be right back. I might just be dehydrated because I, I drank a little bit of water when I got up. And oh my God, you know that feeling where you, you just hella dehydrated? and you just feel that shit coursing through your veins especially when the water is like really cold on top of it oh bro i fucking love that shit like i'm like fuck my shit up dog <laughs> i love that feeling i feel like a fucking whore for water when that shit happens and i, I don't mind i'm like violate my shit fam just i, I need that shit right now I also like it when soda burns like burns the back of my throat sometimes i have to stop myself because i don't know the pain it feels good i'm gonna just shut up and go eat all right i'm not even fucking hungry no more nigga <laughs> yeah whatever i'll just eat after this okay so jesse moynihan then talks about this scene and says i remember getting in a huge maybe three hour long argument with kent about finn and jake hiding in the coat I was like, I'm not doing it. They're not going to hide. She's going to open the closet and they're not going to be hiding in the jacket. And you were like, why? It makes sense. It works. It's funny. And I was like, it's not funny. Kent then responds with, it was frustrating because I was trying to explain that the only reason that it was in there is so that the door could be opened and she could leave. And I said, you either have to do it or not do it, but don't do it halfway. Then back to Jesse Moynihan, I couldn't figure out any other way to do it. I drew a picture of someone hiding from someone and said, if you put the person in the background from the person they're trying to hide from, it's not suspenseful. I remember you said, oh, is that from one of those books? Usually I say stuff like that. I just went home and was like, I'm a hack. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was fucking funny. I must have been in a bad mood. I think it was Jesse Moynihan too saying that was his first time dealing with having something to say or change or a note. So that was interesting to hear. And they both said that they felt bad about it in retrospect. Now about this one song that Marceline sings, it was stated, I wanted to write something that was not catchy and just moved in one direction and kept changing. It was an experiment to see if kids could put up with that kind of thing. It's so wild when I hear stuff like this and like all the stuff that goes on behind the scenes about whether or not they should include this or this scene or this and that, because a majority of it, like I remember watching it as a kid and then watching it now and I was just like, yo, this shit cool. Like I fuck with it. It's funny. So I don't know. That's so interesting because it makes me like be like, damn, I should probably overthink less about my own work. 
Like, don't get me wrong, you do have to take that into consideration and all that. Because some niggas could have hated that shit. I don't know you, nigga. Like, <laughs> and my overthinking is something I have to work on regardless. But, like, you know, it's nice to know that other creators that have done so much that I look up to and have been inspired by, you know, go through that same shit. I think it was Jesse Moynihan that said this too, but apparently seeing Marceline nude, then seeing Marceline nude was inspired by something that happened to him as a kid. And they did not elaborate because the conversation, like everybody was just like, damn, okay. <laughs> and then the conversation changed. The ending for this episode was actually mad different too at one point. Originally, it was Finn and Jake doing a fashion shoot and Marceline spying on them, but Penn and Kent changed it to this punchline ending here. Like Jake was taking pictures of Finn dancing in this crazy fashion outfit and Pendleton Ward said he only changed it because it was like, it needed to be like a more short, sweet ending instead. So it could kind of just wrap up but that was pretty much it so thank you so much for watching let me know what you think i love you all learn to love yourself please take care of yourself physically mentally spiritually or whatever else blah 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 for real though bro oh my god like i know i've been gone for a minute niggas gotta stop playing with their life they life <laughs> i shouldn't be laughing because i'm low-key serious this shit crazy like, I'm, I'm good now, or good as, I don't know, shit's complicated, life is complicated, I'll be fine, you know, but I recognize I am not invincible, and I am definitely, um, you know, fucking up a bit, or taking some risk, and have been for a while now, but, you know, niggas be hurting, bro. I, you know, I don't, I don't know what to tell you, fam, I don't know what to tell you, it'll make more sense, like, I do know what I want to tell you, but it's it's a process it's a process and i know you understand that or at least i hope so um yeah i don't know i, I wanted to talk a bit more in detail about it but what the fuck just snapped what was it oh it's a water bottle okay um so i don't know links to the discord and social media in the in the description and comment section below once again i love you take care of yourself let me know how your day is going. Good, bad, happy, or sad. I do read it. And on that note, I think I'm about to go eat, drink some water, take care of myself a little bit. You feel me? We ain't we ain't totally on no demon time or nothing, nigga. Fuck that shit. You know, we ain't we ain't that crazy. We a little crazy though. <laughs> I love doing this though. Y'all mean the world to me for real. I'll talk to you later. Peace out.